good to go. We'll do this over again. I mean, it's there's okay. A, you're live. The lag, the lag is so uh, crazy over there. So Adam and I are trying out some new things with YouTube. Okay, cool. Tell me about uh, it. Well, we're trying to figure out how YouTube Live should be working properly. Yeah. And it's a mess. Yeah. So to avoid some of the obstacles today, we decided to schedule the stream, pre-stream it, mm -hmm. to where we could test everything, make sure the audio was working, mm -hmm. everything like that, get the title set, get everything else, boom, we should be good. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we scheduled the stream, everything else. It even gave you a countdown timer and said 34 minutes what? until going live and everything. What? And then it didn't go live. Oh no. So again, Look, YouTube is so bad idea. at doing live content. Well, okay. Uh, <laughs> not to bring this up. So I had to go manually push it. That's you know. so silly. YouTube, come on, get your shit together. You know. Not the people watching on YouTube. I'm talking about Google. Google. Well, Get your shit together. Remember when YouTube launched YouTube Gaming and then Twitch tweeted out, Welcome, Player 2. Yeah. Drama. You wanted Yeah, YouTube is lagging quite a bit, though. Uh, Twitch is like a six-second lag, and YouTube's like 40 seconds. Uh, well, Yami Enters, thank you for helping us uh, live test that. Thank yeah, you. well, so you know, uh, now we know now that we the know. scheduled we live thing doesn't auto-click on like Facebook does. Facebook, it auto-clicks over. <sighs> Yeah. So I guess for YouTube, there's a countdown, but it doesn't actually start. Yeah. I don't, whatever. We're figuring it out. The we're only way to figure it out, out is for us to keep and trying what really everything. matters is you're all here, and we're going to talk comic books. And can I just say how fortunate I feel to be, like, alive to read comic books right now? Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to say that. You wanted to say it, and no, you said it. Yeah, it's So it's, I think, it's uh, I'm guessing that means a lot of the people watching on YouTube missed my whole thing about why Adam's not here. Oh yeah, and that I'm not Adam. This is not Adam. This is Malika. She is the CEO of Hyper RPG. Hi! She's Adam's boss. Yeah, I am Adam's technically, boss. Technically, you are Adam's boss. Room, not, yeah. You don't even have to say are. technically, I, I am his boss. You are his boss. I'm his boss, I'm his roommate. I hope we're friends. <laughs> uh, so Adam is out right now doing a special scouting of a stream that he is doing on Friday, which is a tour of horror locations, primarily Halloween and Pasadena, Hollywood, places like that. It'll be a live stream. We will stream it to YouTube and uh, Twitch at the same time. So make sure to set your calendar for this Friday. He wanted to go live at 5 p.m.? Yeah, he said 5 to 7. 5 p.m. Pacific time. Mm -hmm. So set your calendar. Adam's gonna do that. It's gonna be awesome. You don't wanna miss it. It's gonna be great. Um, so I feel like we had a really weird introduction just because Is the- Is there some music going on? Yeah, there's some music. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. But uh, we're gonna talk about comic books today. Yes, like I and said, I'm And some other things excited. around comic Co books. Comic book adjacent. Comic book adjacent. We can also talk about our beverages. What are you having today? I have Keurig coffee. Cool. I have um, Rose Ceylon Tea. Did I betray the show? It's comics and tea You now. did, you betrayed everything. I, I betrayed everything. You betrayed everything. I know. I'm Was get... that reheated tea too? No, it's, it's, it's even worse. Um, it's How... tea that I made this morning or got it from a shop this morning when we were reading the comics. So it books. is reheated. It's not reheated. Oh, you just... I put cold water in it. What's wrong with you? I know, I put cookies in it too, it was pretty good. <laughs> so it's not even hot tea and you put cookies in it? Oh, I was like dipping cookies Who in dips it. cookies in lukewarm water? No, no, it's cold. You wanna try <laughs> Wait, this? Who does this? Who does this? Who dips, who dips chocolate chip cookies in cold tea? Your boss does. <laughs> anyone in the chat, any of the chats for who we're streaming out to right now, does anyone did anyone? Wow. That, okay, we learn something new every day. I dropped some of my cookies. Now it is really cold tea and cookies. Cause you dropped a cookie in there, didn't you? You dropped a little piece of cookie in there? You got some cookie in your tea? It's probably better than that cure egg stuff you're drinking No, right you now. know what, honestly, I'm gonna put money down that this cure egg Pete's coffee is better than your cold cookie tea. Yeah. Be the judge of that. Give me the out. Don't, don't slap my hand away. Coffee. <laughs> so, comic book adjacent this mm -hmm. week. 
should we talk about the Watchmen premiere? Because we yeah, both, we watched sure. it. We, we watched, watched that. the we watched the Watchmen. First of okay. We did. You did too. Probably. I have a lot to say, but I'll let you go first. Because I have manners. I mean, it's gonna be a discussion. We're both going to talk about it. All right. So the premiere. So the premiere was amazing. Uh, in my opinion. Okay. Because it featured a real event that Woo! is kind of uh, been wiped from American history, which yeah. is the, uh, what is the name of this event? It's like the Tulsa. They call it, okay, it used to be called like race riots, mm -hmm. but it's a massacre. Yeah. It was a race massacre. Yeah. And I know historians have been trying to relabel it as mm -hmm. a massacre. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even know about this event. And Which is wild. How many yeah. of you watching who watched this episode didn't know about this event. I will honestly say the only reason I knew about it is I saw a Twitter moment. I learned about it on like Twitter. three years ago, yeah. Yeah, off Twitter. I don't even think it was years ago, but it was somebody put together a moment and I read it and I re researched it and then I got even more into it and mm -hmm. went down that rabbit hole mm -hmm. of diving really deep into it. Could not believe that yeah. I finally saw it represented in a show yeah. and Watchmen mm -hmm. of all that. Because that is like the timeline that's still real. Yeah. You know, in the Watchmen, the timeline doesn't really shift until around Dr. Manhattan. Right, right. Uh, that's when the timeline starts to deviate. Mm -hmm. So back then, that's like, that's real timeline. Mm -hmm. That's our history, mm -hmm. y'all. That's our freaking history. Yeah, so that's like... The, you know, to for them to start the show like that was... I mean, it's kind of amazing because I feel yeah. like that is why people make art is to create moments like that and to create conversation where people really need to have them. Because, uh, yeah, it is, you know. And it opens up a lot of discussion because. A, a, a lot of discussion. Uh, if, if you haven't seen it yet, we are going to discuss the episode right now. Mm -hmm. And I don't think us discussing it will ruin any of the enjoyment of the episode for you. But we are probably going to talk about a couple of things that you might consider spoilers. Maybe there are a couple big things that happen at the end, but I will say the man in the wheelchair who asks if he can lift 200 pounds, mm -hmm. obviously that's the little boy from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple like representations of that little boy that kind of mirror the comic book. And it's weird because it goes back further than the book does mm -hmm. with that little boy's moment. I'm really excited to see where that little boy's story goes. What a good setup, though. Him asking her, do you think I can lift 200 pounds? I know. Holy shit. That is a foreshadow no, no, that no, was she, great. Yeah, I was... That is a great foreshadow. I mean, it was it was dark. What? What? What are you asking? What did you... I, I said that was pretty dark. Oh, that was yeah, dark. Yeah, I was saying... Uh, well, at the end of the show, the 200 pounds is... Yeah. ...a person. W well, spoilers. Yeah. Well... Like I said. was trying to avoid that spoiler. Well, but like, we what, you, what? Oh, you open the can of worms, Zach Eubank, you can't put them back in. Anyways. Uh, um, fine. Uh, if you, I think we, if we're going to discuss the episode, we really have to talk about, um, like you said when we were watching it together, um, black people have become like the powerful majority in this uh, world. And mm. Tulsa. In, we in didn't Tulsa. look outside of Tulsa, That's true. really. That's true. And um, it was really fascinating to see like a version of Oklahoma, the stage play with only black actors and, you know, singing those songs mm -hmm. and uh, uh, just like, you know, black people in positions of power, in the police force, in local law enforcement, in the education system. Um, that was really, really interesting. Well, and... okay, so here's what I think about that. Mm -hmm. I want to dive a little deeper into that. Sure. Because this could be showing, and the filmmaker might be doing this too. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was actually a flip. Sure. As much as it was to say, because we're so unused to, in this kind mm -hmm. of media, seeing so many people of color on screen right. being strong characters yeah. that we assume this is a black story and sure. they have become the ruling class within this moment. And I might be willing to bet, because think of the sheriff mm -hmm. and his position as still a white male yeah. and some of the other characters right. still as white men. I think it could just be that that's part of the statement sure. is we as the viewer yeah. make that interpretation. So when you said that, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't make that interpretation until you said it. And I did. I, was... I made that interpretation after seeing the Oklahoma play. Sure. And the whole audience. And and maybe they're trying to say that in I this thought... world, 
the Black Wall Street rebuilt itself within Tulsa. Or so before you said that you're like, oh, it's like a flip. Mm -hmm. The way I interpreted and I interpreted, I interpreted it that did it did it. Can't speak today. It's probably the cold tea. Oh, with cookies. with cookies. Yeah, it's the cookie tea. Uh, Doesn't that make you think about that tea we had at McGall though, the raisin tea, that kind of tastes like a raisin cookie. Not that's not what that tastes no, like. That's not as good. But that tea's really we good. We have some of that tonight. That tea's great. Anyways, we don't have time for that. Uh, when I saw the show open up with um, Oklahoma, I thought it was a statement on revival and bouncing back. As a person who's grown up in the South and saw mm -hmm. like Louisiana and New Orleans in particular get destroyed by hurricanes, and yet so many like powerful stories of you know, mostly um, black Americans rebuild their community. Like, I thought that's what it was trying to say because you open the show with this massacre, this yeah. tragedy, you know, little boy being carted away, holding a baby. And then we start off with a celebration. It's a show and all these um, characters are being portrayed by black actors. And I think, I thought it was just trying to say like, um, look how much, this community has yeah. bounced back from that tragedy. I, right, I was starting to interpret it as mm. well as like, in this history, Black Wall Street rebuilt itself. Yeah. And they are the prominent business leaders as well. And what a fucking like, strong move, and of course HBO can do this, to yeah. basically just right off the bat be like, white nationalism is the villain. Yeah. Boom. Um, you yourself don't know much about Watchmen. No. So, like, I watched the movie, like, in high school, and I was like, I like comic books, and I, like, tried to read them, but they were so irrelevant to me because it was a co about a completely different era. It's about the 80s. It's about I, uh, and, Reaganomics. And, and also, and like, the colors are, like, crazy. They are. It's, it's I, I, like, super... couldn't get into it, and there was other stuff I was more interested in reading at the time. I'll be completely honest. The first time I read it, I, not, I read none of the Black Freighter stuff. Mm -hmm. I skipped over all the Black Freighter stuff, and it wasn't until years later that I went back and read Black Freighter uh, inserts within the issues and stuff like that. Uh... The Watchmen is one of those books that I feel like, for me, it's always there. It's mm -hmm. always present. I wouldn't call it my favorite comic, sure, but it's always there. Yeah. It's one of the building blocks of, yeah, I, of what we have now. So I, I've, of course, read it. And sure. I, of course, uh, connect with a lot of different tropes and things that come within that. And, you know, I liked aspects of the movie. I, you know, I'm not a huge fan of Snyder's work, but I feel like Snyder is at his best when he's doing 300 and Watchmen. <laughs> And the, the, you know, following the comics and making these visually striking yeah, stories. Yeah, I, I, uh, I mean, I like the movie, um, but I, I just couldn't get into the comic books. It was just about a, a, an era that yeah. I wasn't fascinated by. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. Preston Brian asked in the YouTube chat, are we currently talking about Tulsa? We were, and we're going to kind of go through uh, through that. And uh, yes, Oklahoma is an actual play. They yes. Just, they just. It's a famous one. They just kind of primarily reverse the races there, which has happened, I'm sure. Yeah. In black yeah, schools, yeah, yeah. people have done Oklahoma. Yeah. Uh, and for somebody else who was asking WDM, uh, there is, he's asking in the Twitch chat, if we read both chats, we do, we have two windows pulled up. Mm -hmm. There is one program that allows you to combine the YouTube and Twitch chat. It's called Restream, but you have to be using their service to yeah. do it. And it doesn't show super chats. So we decided to stop using it and just we pull just, them up on two we windows. Have, we just have two chats going Right, on and we do look time. at both. We don't ignore the YouTube chat. Mm -hmm. It's just completely honestly, there's a lot less people that watch on YouTube than Twitch, and there's a lot more people in yeah. Twitch talking. But yeah. we, we, we look at both and we talk to YouTube mm -hmm. and Twitch as well. Usually when we start looking at the comic books, the Twitch chat keeps going and the YouTube chat goes silent. Yeah. Which is really strange, because I thought our YouTube audience would read more comics than our Twitch audience because of the superhero content. But it's weird, it's kind of like our RPG audience reads more comics. And we're, I think that we get a lot of tweets from the YouTube audience though about them getting into it. Oh, well, And they're like, they're diving great. in, especially we just did the Bloodshot trailer reaction mm -hmm. and a lot of people have already been tweeting like, where should I read Valiant books? I want to read some Valiant stuff. And you're like, well, let me tell you. Yeah, I love Valiant stuff. So going back to Watchmen. Um, I also... What did you think of the pilot episode of season one of the show without being someone who's read the full, the book? Okay. 
So, like, I know bits and pieces about the book because I, like, tried to read them, but I barely remember it. And I did not read the ending that everybody's about. So, I think it's great without the comic books. And I think it's almost better as the comic books, uh, without the comic books, because there's, like, little nods to things, like, people with Rorschach masks and stuff like that, but it's not, like, a direct tie-in. So I feel like you should just watch it as its own thing. Yeah. That's my opinion on it as somebody who is like not like a huge Watchmen comic book reader, lover, that kind of thing. Um, I will say that I saw Marquia wrote on her Facebook that when she watched that first episode, it she meant cried. a lot to her and <laughs> yeah. she cried. Uh, for me, I'm, I'm very intrigued. I, I, I think I need more time to see with... Uh, see it to, uh, where it's gonna go. I thought it was interesting that our main character has a Asian bakery uh, and she talks about growing up in Asia. Okay, you want me to tell you why? Sure, why? Uh, just because that's a that's a Watchmen time. Yeah. Uh, in the Watchmen universe, we won the Vietnam War because of Dr. Manhattan mm -hmm. and Vietnam became the 51st state. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're... And so she like grew up there? In, right. Yeah. It, like we, People were allowed to just stay there. Mm -hmm. You get the idea that she was like, her dad was probably deployed there and she was born there and it's a US state. If you notice in the shots where they're all outside in the yard and you see all the flags in the background on people's houses, mm -hmm. the flag is different because it's a 51 star flag and it's like a circle with the stripes on the side. So it's a different flag. There's 51 states and Vietnam is one of them, which I thought was really interesting. Yeah, I thought that was interesting yep. too. So that's a tie in to what happened in the book, which I, another thing I thought was really interesting, we got to see Dr. Manhattan mm -hmm. on the TV in the background. So he's still on Mars and the book happens in the eighties. And I feel like we're being told book was in the eighties. That happened, especially yeah. when they say Robert Redford Wait. has been president for 30 years. So as somebody who's read the books, why is it raining squids? Okay. <laughs> That's like a big part of what happened in the books. It's kind of the culmin. You haven't read the book, so it makes sense. It makes sense. Uh, but I feel like, I feel like, it should have to stand alone. I don't think you should make a TV show that you have to read the comic book to enjoy. You know what I mean? Right. But did seeing the squids come down and all the world building around that take you? Did did that make you not enjoy it? No. It made me feel like, huh. That's what it made me feel like. Huh. Huh. So, Jeremy Irons, who we saw at the end. Yeah. There's a couple things here that are really interesting. Sure. We see Jeremy Irons, who's playing Ozymandias. Ozymandias? How do you pronounce his name? Chat? Mm, help me out. I'm bad with words. Ozymandias, Ozymandias, whatever. We try. You know, a Greek, you know, mm -hmm. is a uh, famous Greek... General? Okay, whatever. Uh, he was obsessed with Greek culture, and that was his like hero name. Uh, what's interesting is there's also a part in the episode where it says that he's dead, that his character's dead. It's like a newspaper headline, and I was like, oh, okay, I guess he's dead. And then we see Jeremy Irons, and I told you the second Jeremy, I did no research on this show. I wanted to go in blind, so I'm like saying stuff as the episode's going, and I can tell Malika has no fucking clue what I'm talking about. So the second Jeremy Irons gets out of the car, I was like, oh my god, I hope he's Ozymandias because Jeremy Irons is the perfect casting for Ozymandias. And, and then I was like, he has to be. He's the way he's talking to the robots, his castle on the hill. And like that castle is what, when you're seeing the shot of Dr. Manhattan on the TV, he's like recreated that castle in the Mars dust and he's collapsing it. And you're like, what does that mean? Also, Dr. Manhattan's just been on Mars for 40 fucking years? What the hell is that all about? Or 35 years, Ozymandias. I got it right. Yes. Uh, so yeah, I thought that was great. I think Jeremy Irons is perfect for that. There were a couple things I didn't know what to think about. Like what? Pacing and some of the way like the story was un revealing itself. Um, like I said, I think I just need more time with the show because there was a lot there uh, to unpack, like the mm. world, the characters. The different um, kind of forces at play in the story. Yeah, uh, it's just like a lot to consume if you like are not familiar with the comic books. But uh, that being said, I I like the performances. Cool. You know, I'm intrigued by the characters. So some people in the chat are posting other things, both chats, YouTube and Twitch, uh, about things that people have researched on the show. 
I kind of don't want to. No, I don't want to research I, the show. I don't want to like go back and read the comic books. Like I Lindenoff just want to watch the he's, show. As he did Lost, thing. so like just when I was watching Lost, I don't want to research mm -hmm. what the creators are saying about it. I kind of want to just watch and and make my own. See if I can figure out where things are going on. Um, so yeah, there's all sorts of crazy stuff happening. I probably won't read the letter about it, but they are saying in the chat that it is supposed to be continuity within the book, but just further along, which I kind of picked up from the show. But the part that was kind of freaking me out was some of the pacing stuff and some of the stuff, uh, maybe it was just the setup, but it was jumping around quite a bit. And I kept trying to imagine it as a person who had never read Watchmen. Yeah, that's like my Right, and I kept trying to think from that perspective, be like. I thought it was fine. And it reminded me a little bit of American Gods. Yeah. In the way that it kind of revealed certain things. I like American things. Gods a lot. Right. Uh, I like American Gods a lot too. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like American Gods was tighter. Oh yeah, way tighter. And this does feel a little bit more like a comic book property. Yeah. For better or worse. Yeah. Uh, but I kind of like that. Yeah. Because there's like this. I feel like I, American a, Gods has um, a tighter internal logic, and yes. that's why it's like yes. easier to follow and yes. really get sucked in. Yes, the 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 relationships between the magical and the real are, are so like you can yeah. track them. The really magical well. and the magical and the real and the real yeah. and yeah. Uh, as far as Watchmen, I felt like I was enjoying those aspects and. It kept me constantly being like, I don't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna like uh, this next scene. Like, who the who mm -hmm. the hell knows? Why is that guy all in red and Russian? I don't fucking yeah. know. But he's it's great. It's cool. It's mm -hmm. weird. It's it's weird. Yeah. And I'm I'm into that. And uh, you know, like the stuff like her having the bakery, it, 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 but then having all of her weapons in the back of it. You yeah. Know, and everything else. It's right. like it's fucking weird. But then weird. also like psh, like at on home. her head, yeah, like, her head like, going her and everything like and that. And then she's gonna like, you know, like. I'm trying to get a sense of the logic and it's not as clear to me, but then she'll like say goodbye to her sexy husband, but then she's the real badass. But then like uh, the the harmless homeless man at the beginning is not, he, yeah. he's the sinister person. So who's the bad guy? Who's the good guy? I'm a little unclear. Uh, oh, I, think I can tell point. you what's clear. The people obsessing over Rorschach's journal are the bad guys. Um, they are, and there will be, I'm, I guarantee you the person that passes in this episode, there's probably gonna be, because of the way it lined up with the comedian in Watchmen and kind of like mirrored how that reveal was in the in the book and how it sets things up, uh, I imagine we're gonna find out that he was dirty and there was some stuff going on there, like he was a little crooked. Um, and that's been perversed a little bit, just like Rorschach's journal's been perversed. Um, it was really cool to see how the owl and all of his tech had kind of turned into the police force. That was really cool uh, to see the future of that. There's a lot of stuff that was just really cool to see. Wesley Marshall asked in the YouTube chat if we think this ruins Alan Moore's book. Um, and some people are really like, you know, because he's really protective um, about like, his stuff being well, he's adapted. A he is a character. We had like, this conversation after we watched the show. Is like. Alan yeah. Moore, what a character. He is a character, and I guess I see that both ways. Mm -hmm. As a creator, if I was him, I would be pissed. Mm -hmm. As a creator, if I spent my life making works mm -hmm. that I was very proud of, that mm -hmm. had a very clear statement to make, yeah. and then because the corporation I made it for owns it, mm -hmm. they get to do whatever they want with it right. and, and continue and it's the same name bastardizing and it and continue yeah. using it. Um, yeah, as a creator, I would be frustrated. I yeah. can see from his perspective. As a fan of stories and how I think after a while, stories become a part of our collective you know, like, mm -hmm. it's like Spider-Man has become more than Spider-Man. Right, yeah, Spider-Man yeah. is a cultural figure. It's yeah. a conversation, you know, like, so many different adaptations can be made of yeah. Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. uh, I don't think they have to be beholden to Stan Lee. But granted, Spider-Man and other characters like that are kind of built to be uh, pick up and plug in. Sure. For other writers, for yeah. other creations. You know, those are IPs built for that. The Watchmen's not. Yeah. It's a very particular, like, commentary and statement. Yes. And so to pick it up and use it for how you want. Well, if I was a creator, yeah, I'd be pissed. I, I think it's tough because of the original Watchmen comic books were made uh, 
as a conversation piece around a cultural mm -hmm. and political and societal context. And it's like, you, you can't take what you want and like reconfigure it, yeah. you know what I mean? Without a strong vision, so. I don't know, I'm curious. Yeah, check it I, out. I, I'm the, curious too. I, I really enjoyed the first episode and I am not opposed to people. I, I don't think it ruins the book. Mm -hmm. I can empathize and agree with Alan Moore and the thing is, we don't really know what Alan Moore thinks no, right now. No, he's a character. <laughs> he kind of just secludes himself from it all, and yes. who knows what he actually thinks. Right. And who knows if he's trolling you when he does. Right. We, we have no idea if he actually means it or it's a bit. Oh, I think he means he doesn't want his name attached yeah. to this stuff, and yeah, I think yeah. he means he doesn't like all the things that are being done sure. with it. But if you were to ask him now, he probably hasn't watched it. He probably won't watch it. He, he probably doesn't care because he's an yeah. artist and he's making his own shit. Mm -hmm. But I could agree with him and be upset that if that was my work and that's what was being done to it, I can see that. But I don't think things like that ruin the book. I will forever die on this hill. Nothing ruins your thing unless they literally take it from you to never be experienced again. Every new adaptation of a character, um, every new adaptation of a I will disagree with that. It doesn't ruin your experience with your thing from your past because you can still experience it. If, you know, I say I don't like, it was like when the- uh, You didn't like Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. I was just about to say that. I didn't like Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, but I'm not gonna take that away from the people who do. And it's not my right to be like, nah, fuck it, blah, blah, we shouldn't have it. It's like, I still got, I, at that point, I was like, I still got my Tobey Maguire Spider-Mans. I can go watch, I can pop in Spider-Man 2 and watch it anytime I want. Or I can sit here and I can pull up my tablet and start reading Spider-Man comics. Oh, I don't like the current writer on Spider-Man? That's cool, I'll go back and I'll reread this one that really connects with me in a really unique way. Nobody's taking that from me. Just because somebody else made an adaptation that I don't connect with doesn't mean that I can't still connect with the things that I love. Sure, that's that's true, that's fair. I like that, that's a good perspective. But I know there are, I, I would love to see some some hands in the chat room, raise your paws. Uh, they're all thumpers. To me, they're all like little rabbits typing on keyboards anyway. Uh, raise your paws if there was some character or story or IP that you really loved and then there was an adaptation that went against what you thought that character represented or stood for. You I know, mean, I I'm have a lot of those. I'm talking a value thing. I, I have a lot yeah. of those. That's how I felt about the Andrew Garfield sure. Spider-Man. He was a dick. He was a dick. I don't like Peter Parker being a yeah. dick. I didn't like Dan Slott making Peter sure. Parker a dick. I don't, wanna, I don't want a Tony Stark, yeah. Peter Parker. That ain't my shit. Yeah. But I still have what I love. Sure. I'm not gonna be so like arrogant to be like, oh, I can't, you know, like I can say in one breath, I can't stand Dan Slott Spider-Man, but I don't think he should like not have been able to write it. No, that's true. Because there's, there's other people that love it. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's cool. But that's called being reasonable on the internet, which apparently isn't a good thing. You need to have very clear black or white representations of how you feel about things because any gray area at all doesn't make sense. Yeah, I don't. I don't know, I, I think I disagree with you because, for example, if you create a character to be like a feminist symbol or something, mm -hmm. and then uh, somebody takes that character and writes them to be like a sexy objectified person, I think I would be like angry. You and can be angry, but if that other version still exists, yeah, you can't, and here's the thing, and I'm only saying this because I hear a lot of people in the liberal Twitter camp, sure which I am a part of, yeah. who will make statements against people who say, who will use that argument to be like, they changed the race of this character. Yeah. This was, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I will often say, well, like, well, you can still experience that character sure. the way you liked them when they were a part of this thing. And I think you could do the flip for that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So um, you can be angry, but to say it shouldn't exist. I don't know. I disagree on that one. Okay. But. We can agree to disagree. Because I feel like I hear that same argument from angry dudes who get mad when I, they when No, they, I, I act... I, when I, they change. I know where you're coming from, yeah. but it doesn't... Like, I... Un, but I understand, like, why they're angry. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, like I said, like, there are some, like, female superhero characters that, to me, certain writers write them as feminist icons, and other writers write them as sex objects, mm -hmm. and, like... I feel like that shouldn't exist because there are young girls who are reading that 
and they're like, they're idolizing these characters, and then like somebody else who's like old fashioned or something or has different ideas, yeah. kind of almost reverts that character's values. I think it's always about the value, right? It's less about like. I don't care about like their race or their appearance or something. Like I'm not one of those people that get upset when there's like a new costume change. You know, I'm like get over that kind of stuff. But when there's like when I feel like we're going backward on values, like um, I'm not saying I'm right or wrong, but I am. I will be offended. It will upset me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you. I mean, that's the thing. You have a right to be upset. Sure. You have a right to be offended. You have that. You have that right to say like, fuck this. I don't want any part of this. I'm out. Uh, you have the ability to say that and then you can be like, okay, cool. Somebody right. else out there will probably like it and you can disagree with them. Uh, it's, it's, it's the same with like the, the Joker stuff. You know, I was trying to make a, a reasonable argument that this looks like it could be problematic. I hope I'm wrong. And I think a lot of people on YouTube misconstrued my, uh, my point I was trying to make, which is like, I don't want it to be. I'm not trying to signal virtue what I want the Joker to be. I don't give a shit about the Joker. I don't care enough about the Joker as a character to have any opinion on what the Joker should or should not be as a, as a thing. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't fucking care. Uh, but... It's more of saying like from a marketing standpoint, if I get this vibe from this and a lot of other people are getting that vibe from this, maybe the marketing team should go back and be like, hey, hey, maybe Todd shouldn't be allowed to talk about the movie anymore because it's gonna, it's gonna like rub things the wrong way and make people uncomfortable and we'll make more money if he shuts up. <laughs> uh, you know, let's re-spin it. Because I think a lot of uh, the hyperbole that was coming, or hyperbole. Hyperbole! Yeah. Oh, look, he's doing it! He's that learning. came out about the movie was overblown. Uh, but I think the other thing for people to remember is often we're arguing with headlines. We're not arguing with discussions. Yeah. We're arguing about a clickbait headline. You argue about that, and then when you dive into what was actually said, that's you're true. like, no, oh, that's pretty reasonable. Uh, yeah, that's a reasonable I, observation. I feel like when but we, we're arguing about the headlines. Well, I think I think it all it's all about time. So I think when people actually keep themselves open minded and they spend the time to actually listen, most people are really like reasonable. But it's just because of the nature don't of like get Twitter. Baited. Don't yeah, get baited. Don't get baited, guys. Jeez. Don't fall into those traps, okay? Recognize traps. Uh, <laughs> right. Um, it's because Twitter is like Tweets are so short. Yeah, people say blasphemous stuff. Or headlines. It's no, no, no. Context. It's 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 an unfortunate situation of an algorithm-based world uh, where, where these we share people information. Right. YouTube is the exact same way. I'll never forget. Like I said, what Andre tells you guys have really honest discussions on your YouTube. It's why you'll fail. <laughs> and then we get really sad about it. I know. And he said it, it came <laughs> because from a good place. it comes from a good place, but it's also the truth. It's an algorithm based on if you Love can get you, people Andre. upset. If you make them angry, you have a better chance of getting more clicks because people only follow and focus on that one thing that made them angry. And we know a lot of people do this. The thing is, like, a lot of people who comment certain things on trailer reactions, we can click on your username and see the things you've commented on other people's things. Or we can do a data query search on certain people. Uh, you can do that from Google. You can search a username and you can find their comments. And you'll often find they're posting the same thing on multiple videos just to make someone angry, just to get a rise out of somebody. And we argue over the headline. We argue over the, the it's a lack of substance, you know? And I think it, it's, it's a lack of evaluating the context yeah. um, of what we're trying to discuss. Oh yeah. It really shuts down the conversation. And I think what frustrated me about the conversation Adam and I had about the Joker, I could tell people were yelling in the YouTube chat without watching the entire discussion where we acknowledge our own biases, we acknowledge how we made it feel, and that we're right, we have a right to feel that way. Um, and we have a right to go watch the movie and decide on our own whether or not we liked it, you know? Uh, thank you, Preston Bryant, for yeah. the super chat. I don't think I've ever been in that position about a character, but I do enjoy this conversation. Talking about uh, being offended about how a, a character you might love yeah. was treated. I love, I love this comment, because it's such a weird comment. It's weird that he has better chemistry with his wife than Adam, question mark. Is, is that it's, weird? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, uh, I think he's saying, because somebody else, he commented, uh, Marcus commented earlier, 
Zach looks more relaxed than with Adam. Uh, one of that is the text working right now. You guys have no idea how much stress that causes me. Uh, and I'm two, just sitting here eating cookies and cold tea. I, I would hope, uh, you know, and somebody said that's a weird thing to say. It's like, no, I mean, it's the truth. Mm -hmm. I am going to be more relaxed with Malika than almost anyone else. No one else has seen me naked. Malika has. <laughs> so I'm obviously going to be more comfortable in this situation. We're married, for fuck's sake. So we should be able to be comfortable in a room together, I would hope. <laughs> Awkward. That's it. I just need to get naked in front of Adam and then we'll release it. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I just got a visual in my head and it was very awkward. It was back in the old house and you were just creeping around with a towel. Boss, and how then much Adam of it... walks by Boss. and is like, <clears throat> Boss, how much of this conversation is inappropriate for work? <laughs> Adam makes this thing when he hears something inappropriate, which is like, <laughs> Emily does it too. You can see why they're like me. <laughs> People do, mm? Mm? <laughs> This, I mean, that's usually that's him sitting Adam. between Hector and <laughs> Augie, right? Mm? 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 <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Adam. <clears throat> anyway. Right. Have you guys seen it? Have you seen the Adam like, mm? And a probes. <laughs> oh, they've all seen it. They've seen it. <laughs> they've seen that. Um, <laughs> Are we going to talk about the books? We'll get there. Adam and I do this every week, too. We go about an hour of shooting the shit and then an hour of talking about we're, All right. Books. If we're shooting the shit, then... But we're shooting the shit in a constructive sure. way. We're all talking right, about right. okay. the things, you know, we went from Watchmen to uh, characters and how, you know, can making something new destroy the joy or the intention of the original? Um, I think... Uh, it cannot because my interpretation of the original is intact and unless someone steals it from me and literally says it doesn't exist, we're erasing it, whatever. But still, can anyone really take your experience with something? Mind wiping drugs, whatever, I don't know. Uh, You're saying that you disagree and I can understand that yeah. disagreement. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we, we had a, that was a discussion. That was a discussion. We, and yeah. it's, re it's relevant. <laughs> it's relevant. <laughs> relevant it is funny though because those clickbaits I mean Adam and I researched this stuff and I th it's it's the unfortunate situation of the times we live in and everyone hates it equally all creators pretty much hate this because we want to be able we want to be able to just have a discussion with you like we're doing right now calling it comics and coffee mm -hmm. and we'll have a discussion and we'll talk about these comics and everything but we know for a fact Ba especially with YouTube. Twitch and YouTube are two very different things. YouTube is an algorithm-based platform. Twitch is very much a platform built on trust and uh, hanging community. out with the community in a certain, community. you know, you, you can't randomly come across a title from a search bar on Twitch. So you have to build a community. So we know the same people are gonna be here talking to us every day on Twitch. With YouTube, it's very much like people show up if we bait them into it. So for instance, when we do, when we did the, uh, the live comics and coffee where they knew we were gonna talk about the Joker trailer and watch it, we had so many more live viewers. They're not here for the show. They're not here for Adam and I. They're here for that clickbait. They're there because they have an opinion on it. Drama. They want the drama. They wanna know if their opinion lines up with our opinion drama. and whether or not they can yell at us. So it's, it's a tough game because we love our YouTube audience and we wanna to talk to you. We wanna hang out with you. And that's why we're doing this weekly show but we find it's much harder to reach you when it comes to us just wanting to have a conversation. Uh, whereas Twitch is the flip side. When we do something really cool on Twitch, it's hard to let people know it exists, but we have conversation with people every day on Twitch and, and they know what to expect from us and who we are and the, the, the output that we put out there and on all that good stuff. So it's, we're trying to balance both with this show to try to meet in the middle, but it's tough. If we don't put a clickbait on that title, the YouTube audience doesn't really show up. I, you know, I, and I kind of tried it this week just by titling it Comics and Coffee, you know. I can't remember what the second part was, like Katie gets a boat. It's in line, did you read Marauders? Katie gets a pirate ship. A pirate ship, yeah, nope. did you read Marauders? I don't think so. Uh, it's fun, and we're gonna talk about All it. All right, cool. It's the next X-Men book. Awesome. Yeah. <sighs> what would have been a good clickbait for this week? For this week? Who watches Who suck. watches the Watchmen? Nobody. It sucked. <laughs> uh. <laughs> 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 
thought we're gonna get, we're canceling Adam or something. No, no, no. Oh yeah, Adam is canceled. No, but that honestly, that wouldn't do it either. I wouldn't. They do don't it. care enough about Adam either. Not really. Like, uh, nice Preston Bryant, thank you for the super chat. Yo, I appreciate yeah. your honesty, Zach. Yeah, yeah. Well, at least somebody does. Uh, I did see a question in the um, Twitch chat if I got to see the international cut of the Bloodshot trailer. I did not. Oh, so we should hit up our international contact there. Or we could just pull it up on YouTube, Malika. Oh, okay. I didn't know if it was out or not. <laughs> I didn't know it was out or not. <laughs> I just know that it was Vin Diesel and I got a, like a PR email about it. Did you get the PR email? I didn't get the PR email. Ooh. I've been texting with Dinesh instead. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, I get the PR emails. He just texts the people who make it. Yeah, I've been, I've been texting with Dinesh and telling what I think. And I'm on all he the said, PR He emails. said that it's, uh, he said that he's, too close to it to know anymore. <laughs> he was like, did you really like it? And I was like, yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm too close. I'm too close. Uh, I will I will like watch it, it though. Okay. I, I mean, if I honestly thought it was just okay, I would say that. I wouldn't lie to somebody. Oh. If, I, if I thought the trailer was just okay, I'd be like, eh, you know, oh. it was just okay. You would tell Dinesh that? Yeah. Oh, no wonder he respects you. No, I would tell, I would tell him that. I would tell anyone I work with that's why I don't have very many friends, Malika. You know this. Aww. You know this. Why am I with you? <laughs> you know this. It's a problem. It's a, it's a problem. But I honestly thought the trailer was really good. Uh, and I will admit, I'm watching it from a biased perspective as a huge fan of those books. Oh, well, I know nothing about the books. I'm like, dude with a red circle. Yeah. Kind of looks like, what's the other guy? That X-Men that's metal and has an accent that's Eastern European. Well, you want to talk about comic books? I've been waiting for you. What else is going on this week? <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's anything else in the world of comic books we should talk about, but I feel like the Watchmen, the Bloodshot trailer. Um, well, there's... Uh, Did you watch the Bloodshot trailer? No. And there's also Supergirl and uh, Bout, uh, Woman... Or girl. Well, those are the CW shows yeah. that came out. Uh, the new seasons have been right, uh, bump, 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 coming out. I haven't watched the season premiere of Arrow yet. I'm excited though. Now that I know there's only eight episodes, I'm like, I'm into that for the final season. Make it tight. I think that's cool. Really, dude? You can just do that? There's no water in this. Oh dish. my gosh. Should I put some? And uh, I did see the season premiere of all the other CW shows though. And uh, I'm gonna be completely honest, not a fan of Batgirl. Really? I, I thought I was gonna like it because I liked her appearance in uh, Elseworlds last year and Batgirl really underwhelmed me for the pilot episode. But all that being said, I haven't watched episode two yet and I'm hoping that episode two fixes a lot of the problems that I had with the pilot of Batwoman. Did I call it Batgirl? Did I say Batgirl? I said Batwoman and then I got, I confused myself and I tried to correct by saying that girl, but that's not what I meant. Okay. I was, you gotta trust your first instinct. Anyway, I wasn't a huge fan of the pilot. I thought it was very strange. It reminded me of early Arrow before Arrow kind of figured its stuff out. And it, it didn't have, part of what made early Arrow so rough is it was taking itself so seriously before it figured out how to fit within that serious world. And I think later seasons of Arrow started figuring it out. Still had some issues with some of the villains being kind of, okay. Hey. <laughs> not even that. No, they're trying too hard. Like, like, I get it. This is not a comic book world. This is the real world. And that guy's a gangster. Uh, you know, and Flash and Supergirl get the opportunity to be really fun and have fun villains and fun comic book scenarios. And I hope Batwoman finds its stride. I really do. But the premiere did not impress me. It just didn't impress me. Aw. Disappointed Batwoman and sad about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it seems... just gotta hang in there till episode three. Yeah. Uh, well, George Jr. said, yeah, episode two is much better and three is wonderful. So, we'll see. We'll just hang in there. Just yeah. Hang in there. Black, li Black Lightning, to me, is always strong. I love I Black Lightning. I think the family dynamic in that is so strong. The family is so strong. All the characters are so strong. Uh, I really like the daughters. The daughters really resonate with me. Yeah. Um, uh, 
I have, I'm in a family of all um, girls, so like that just spoke to me a lot. Yeah, it's good. I think Black Lightning is Like really they strong. love each other like so much, but it's not in a like, ooh, perfect cookie cutter way. You know, they have to work through things. Um, but I feel like it's just very honest and um, realistic. Yeah, and the crisis event that's coming up this year is looking bonkers. It's what's gonna get me to finally have Adam watch these shows. Adam doesn't watch any of the CW no, TV stuff. just Zach and Not I. Not at all. We just get sucked and in. And Crisis on Infinite Earths will be what brings Adam in because of all the Supermen. They're bringing together Supermen from oh, everywhere really? and he's so pumped. That's he's good. He's so pumped. Okay, so uh, should we dive in? All right. Let's do it. Cool. Let's dive in. Are we, do we go down the list like Ooh, this? We're gonna go down the list. Okay. Uh, we're gonna go down the list. You are obsolete so, number two. I read number one and number two. Good, you To catch right. up uh, uh, with this book. I don't know if you guys remember, a couple weeks ago, number one came out. We talked about it here on the show. We even looked at a couple of the pictures. What did you guys think of the first one and overall for the story? We liked the first one. Sure. Uh, I, I honestly thought the first one had an interesting setup that was really creepy. Yeah. And there was a real creepy vibe yeah. going on. Yeah, yeah. And that was mainly missing from this one. So, um, I like skimmed this one and I was like, wait, I gotta read the first one. I like the first one way better. Oh no. Oh, than no. the second issue. Oh, oh no. no. Oh like, no. Why is it like censored? Oh no. Oh no, it's not censored. I know what happened. I was trying to get. I was trying to help out the audience. Comixology's white mode is just so bright. Yeah. I was trying to put a dark mode yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've, I found like a- Oh, yeah. no, it so, didn't work. It didn't so, work. So yeah, I love, um, yeah, the, the first one is interesting. I like the setup. Uh, I was kind of hyped for it because I was like the, the um, concept of planned obsolescence, but a person is like, mm -hmm. You know, this person's about to turn 40. I mean, you're a little older than me. Did that, like, kind of hit a nerve with you? Well, I mean, it's not even 40. It's 30 in this book, right? When they no, hit... she's 40. Oh, right. But when people turn 30, they're... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're obsolete, and they're killed. Um, uh... So, yeah, I thought it was interesting, and I like the perspective of the reporter and the kids and everything. But um, it kind of... Kind of leaves you a, a cliffhanger at the end of the first issue, and then the second issue it has nothing to do with that. It was weird. She it was, was a just weird like, jump. Uh, it was just like sex, drugs. I gotta forget forget what happened, and I was like, what? All of the suspense that was built up in the yeah. first issue kind of got it got left, dropped, left on the floor, and it felt like they were trying to set it up with this scene. Yeah. Of you know when she first walked in the room at the mm -hmm. end of the, and like oh they've been watching me, but it's like yeah but we already. We I feel knew like that as as the as the readers. I, it's all it was so bad. It almost felt like you know when they run out of time and they just cut pages from a book. I felt like there was supposed to be some pages before. Yeah, it was a real I bummer. I thought the first issue was really strong. Mm -hmm. The second one really it, like, it didn't do anything. It, it did not add make anything. Make me feel anything. No, it was like the first one was building to something and then it like plateaued. Yep. That's how I felt. Kind of a bummer. Uh, I thought there was a lot of promise for that one. I will check out number three, but if number three doesn't turn it around, I'm probably mm -hmm. gonna take it off my pool. Yeah. Uh, it's a new series, and that happens sometimes, you know, but we'll see. Yeah. I hope it turns it and around. And you're a fan of the publisher too, right? Like a huge fan. Mm -hmm. A big fan of the publisher. Uh, so I was like, oh, uh, I've never like read a book from that publisher before, but I, it didn't really hook me. Yeah. No, uh, I, I am a fan, so. Sorry, I'm gonna change the lighting a little bit. I've got everything set up on a remote. Cool. Uh, hopefully that works out. I, oh, I just realized that I'm looking at the YouTube preview, which is like 30 seconds behind, and I have no way to know if what I just did actually looks okay. Whoops. Whoopses. <laughs> I may have gone too ham on the light, on the light change. I have to go back down. Uh, next up is Valkyrie Jane Foster number four. You, did you get a chance to read so this one? So I read this one and- So this is actually a good jumping on point. I yeah. didn't know it was gonna be, but no, it's a no, good no, jumping no. on it's point. It's great. So what is- I was like, oh man, do I have to start at number one? And I just kind of started at number four, which is great because she actually explains herself. It was a good jumping yeah, on point. Yeah, it's a really good jumping on point. Uh, I was it's excited. It's not often that 
arcs are in three issues. Mm -hmm. So arc one was one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. I was not expecting number four to start a new arc. Yeah, so this is a good uh, jumping on point if you're curious about Jane Foster Valkyrie. So I've heard you talk about Jane Foster and like Jane Foster Thor and mm -hmm. how much you really like that character and how she's a cancer survivor and stuff. So I've never read any of that stuff, uh, but I'm so excited for Natalie Portman to come back and for her to be Thor. And I, I like all the Valkyrie characters. Uh, in every week this happens, and every week I tell him to stop leaving his dog here. Come on, let's go. Come on. Uh, every week. Anyways, just talking about Jane Foster, Valkyrie. So uh, I just like love Tessa Thompson, and I love the Valkyrie characters and stuff, and I also like Norse mythology. So I was like, oh, this is this is interesting. Um, and uh, you know, I'm also a female cancer survivor and stuff. So. Uh, I really like this character's voice, Jane Foster. I like, um, and I like how she's written, and mm -hmm. I like her inner dialogue, and I like how the faces are drawn. A lot oh, the art's this. great. The uh, art is the so good. The shading and the lighting. And, and I like this character too. I love this version of mm -hmm. Mephisto. Mm -hmm. So apparently this is something that happened in Doctor Strange. I didn't read that run, but yeah. Johnny Blaze is now the head of hell. So Mephisto is in Vegas at yeah. a hotel. Yep. And this up. conversation that he has with the Grim Reaper in front of him was so freaking great yeah. and gross. Because mm -hmm. uh, you're like, I, you want to hate this guy. Yeah. But not in the like, uh, I don't want another character no. like this. It's like a fun kind of hate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was great to see somebody get Mephesto. Because usually he's not done like this. Mm -hmm. He's done much more like the devil. Yeah. You know, and he's got his loincloth mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. This is great yeah. version of Mephesto. Yeah, suit and everything. This is awesome. Yeah. Uh, big fan of that. But the art in this is amazing. Yeah, the faces in particular are like really awesome. Just like the soft shading. Usually you don't see such softness. Yeah. In uh, a lot of comic. Oh, and the talking horse. Can we just... Okay, when I saw the horse, I was excited. And when the, when the horse talks, I was like, I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. I'm that, sold. That did it, right? You just needed the talking well, horse. Also, like, so this sold. is a good example of like, it's a good jumping on point because it's like, my name is Jane Foster. So it explains, it sets it up. You don't have to go back and read yep. the issues. Yep. Uh, and the horse talks, guys. That's all you gotta do to, <laughs> to sell me. I mean, Jason Aaron loves people from his Thor mythology mm -hmm. having talking animal assistants. Well, I, that's great. I mean, Thor has so many at the yeah. end of the Thor run, it was ridiculous. I mean, it makes sense that he, he does so well with Rocket. Oh my gosh. Uh, a great jumping on point though. If you haven't been reading mm -hmm. Jane Foster Valkyrie, uh, number four is a great book to pick up and get into it. But issues one, two, and three are also really, yeah. they're good. They're good. The last I'll issue was back, maybe. freaking great. Her going through the different realms of a death for God mm -hmm. and all the different death realms was really cool. It was really cool. Uh, Cause Heimdall, spoilers, mm -hmm. died. And, uh, but it was an interesting setup too. So the, she's not technically officially Valkyrie yet. No, no. She needs to carry one hero's yep. soul into the afterlife to seal the deal. So Mephisto is trying to jump in there and take that opportunity mm -hmm. away from her and have one of his yeah. heralds be the first one to take a hero into the afterlife, which is really funny because it's Mephisto. Uh, but if he does that, then he can kind of sneak his way in to have one of his heralds be uh, the new Valkyrie. Uh, so that's kind of what's going on. Yeah. And really fun. We got a, doc you know, we we got got, a Doctor yeah. Strange. Yeah, we got a Doctor Strange. Nice little fight there. And uh, yeah. Oh, and there's a little bit about, uh, I guess, dating Doctor Strange. Dating Doctor Strange? No, yeah, I didn't it was, pick up on it was the person. It was the person giving the speech, and then, and then Jane Foster's like, "Oh, you're not talking about my ex." No, like, no, 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 no. You missed that. Did I? You miss misread that? that. Okay. No, no, no. That girl who was doing the speech yeah. is a uh, lesbian, and her right. girlfriend is a superhero. Right. Her girlfriend is a superhero. Oh, right. that makes sense. All right, cool. Got it. Because that I was confused there, because then Doctor Strange like busts in. Yeah. Uh, next up on the list of books that we read, I didn't get a chance to read Tony Stark. Nope, uh, I didn't. The Ultron agenda. He's my best friend. I know all about him. Oh, my God. Get out of here. <laughs> um, Resonant number four. I didn't read this one either. Is so fucking good. Is this is good? one of the best books on stands right now. Yeah? Resonant is still freaking killing it. Uh, okay. 
A bear? Typical, no, the bear doesn't show up in this one, but it's hinted at. The bear's probably coming next week. Um, here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump to the beginning here. It's kind of, it's a post-apocalyptic scenario, mm -hmm. but it's because there's this wave that goes over the earth. And when this wave hits, it makes people go crazy and kill each other. Oh, so no. we first, in, the, in book one, we meet this family who's got a house out in the woods, mm -hmm. a dad, a daughter, and two sons. One of the sons is in a wheelchair, the daughter only has one leg, oh. and they have a routine. And these cicadas can tell when the wave's about to hit. So these cicadas are a really valuable item. So he's got like a whole cellar of them. And when they start going off, you're about it's to like hit the wave and you gotta strap yourself in. Alert. So you have to like, they strap themselves to the wall and strap themselves down so they can't harm themselves or other people. But the dad has found a way to meditate through it. Mm. But the kids haven't yet. So yeah. he like calms his mind, meditates, and he allows the wave to pass over. And this book is just an exploration of that world. And one of the kids is dying and needs medicine. So he's going into, he goes into town to try to make a deal. And while he's in town, he gets kidnapped, basically, and he's like slave traded. It's fucked up. There's so many fucked up things in this book. And there's, uh, the, I don't want to ruin what happens in this okay, issue because there's some really messed it. up stuff. But it's so strong. The family trying to take care of themselves back home and not make any human contact outside. And uh, this man, the dad, on his journey and trying to get now back to his family after he got literally shipped to an island. He's on an island now with some dude who is taking all these people captive and forcing them to work for him. And it's violent. It is oh, damn. very, That's a lot of blood. very violent. Really uh, cool art though. It's great. This is one of my favorite books on the stands. Uh, Are these actual paintings? They look like little canvas paintings. You see that? Like canvas panel? No, they're not. Just the texture? It's the added texture in Photoshop, for sure. Uh, but this is a good issue. As an indie book, I think it's, it's, it's one of the best books out there. You can't go wrong with it. Can't go wrong. The art's amazing, the writing's amazing. Every issue just keeps kind of upping the ante and escalating. And I'm anxious to see how they bring it back, but we're learning just a little bit more about the wave every single interesting every single issue. Cool. And we learned a lot more about it in this one, so I don't want to. Okay. I don't want to overdo it. Sure. I don't want to okay. like tell you too All much. Right. We learned a lot about. I, it. I mean, I saw a bear on the cover, so I was like, I want to read about that. Oh, so I read. Going wild out there. Uh, this dog. Every 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 Wednesday, we run into this problem. Um, he's. You guys have to forgive him. He has a he lot of- He has a lot of, of separation anxiety. He has a lot of anxiety. And every Wednesday when we do a show up here, uh, usually it means his dad, Lucas, has to go downstairs and work and he leaves Huck up here and then Huck goes crazy and causes a lot of noise and issues. And as a professional studio running content, I expect better of us. So we will fix this problem and stop having all of these tech problems and interruptions. I'd like us to do better, to be a real studio. No, we're a, a zoo. Apparently. Apparently we're a zoo. But so, we'll do better. Um, Rat Queens, uh, this is a nice little standalone uh, issue too. Um, basically, uh, the Rat Queens go on trial and then they die at the end. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> yeah. I was like, when I read that, I was like, what? Um, I mean, look at the summary. That's what happens. The once and future king continues, but the trial of the Rat Queens begins. Captured by Palisade's vengeful new king, the queens must face their sins, court is in session, and the chopping block awaits in the most shocking Rat Queens issue you've ever seen. So, yeah, it delivers. So. I think it's a trick, but it's yeah. It's gotta be. Yeah. They, it has to be a trick. So basically, they go on trial. A bunch of cranky people were like, the rat queens are crappy. And they are convicted of being just like awful people. Did you read today's issue? Yes. Do you want to come talk about oh it? Oh my god. Okay, so I just said, they go on trial and then they die at the end. And Zach is like, what? And I'm like, yes, that's exactly, it's not a complicated story. They get put into a vat of acid. Yes, and you see their bones. In the vat. There That's you it. go. Gary, Gary puts them on trial. Gary's the judge. He basically asks, um, he has all these people come and testify against them. 
He essentially here, says, here, you, you sit, you talk about it. Well, can we, can we, okay, let's back up here. Yeah, you First of all, I wanna, oh God. Uh, I want to show oh. what they are like guilty of, right? So, uh, uh, they're all like chained up and basically these are the people and these are the complaints. I, this one really cracked me up. I saw him murder a child. Uh, or like broke my damn heart, all of them evil. You know, just like, and there's like a turtle lady. I know, saying. I love seeing all the different, yeah, And so, so these are the people with their complaints, and then uh, Gary is like, well, you know. Uh, if you can say one nice thing about me, yeah. I'll let you free. Because mm -hmm. D is like, please Gary, you gotta, we, we've had some hard times, but really just like give us one shot. Yep. It's like yep. say one nice thing about me, and they can't. And, and look at this, I find you guilty <laughs> of the crime of being the absolute shit and the biggest pain in my ass for as long as the realm has ever known. They're standing on a tank of acid, and then they just get dropped in. So, it's so really long, it's, so, it's super gruesome. Uh, yeah, I mean, their uh, skin get burns off and everything. Total spoiler, but... Uh, yeah, they hang their bones yeah. for all of Palisade to see. Um, and so I, I don't know... Well, what's gonna happen next? I really like it though because it, you see in the yeah you see right here uh, essentially this crazy looking eye triangle. Right, right, right. It's telling D because even D early in the episode is like I had a warning about this because yes. you saw her hesitation in the earlier comics when they were fighting on the mountain. You mm -hmm. see she used her god powers and then she kind of hesitated and she was like uh. Oops. And so it looks like Dee's messing with time, mm -hmm. and it has like all the stuff that Dee has done with her powers yeah. is having consequences, and this is one of like one of the few consequences. Right, There's right, right. more. So I was like, oh, uh, is this just a bad dream? I think Dee's gonna keep trying to reset stuff, or we're gonna turn back time. I think we're definitely gonna find out who this eye triangle is. Yes. I'm really, really excited and interested, but I mean, also we have. I mean, do we want to show the ending of it? I mean, I think we kind of already did, didn't we? Yeah, you have Maddie, actually. Yeah. Maddie, Maddie was sent to, essentially at the beginning of the comic, Hannah tells Maddie, all right, you got to kill this huge, giant puppy of Gary's because it's 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 killing D. Mm -hmm. Maddie can't do it, and then Gary, that's when Gary captures all the rat queens. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think she ran, or he kind of, she, she wasn't part of the trial, and here she is coming back, and she is, uh, she's done. She's completely, yeah. she's finished. Finished. And it's, what a cliffhanger. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. And also, where did Gary get these magical powers? I know. I think this I has, hate that guy. I think this has something to do with the whole time thing. And so I'm yeah. really excited because that's something I really had fun with, with playing with the Rat Queens is like, okay, let's build out, like, there's these other forces that, like, mm -hmm. yes, there's these chaotic, this chaotic group of female mercs, but also there's so many things that are right. way beyond their power and they're they're messing with things. And so it was so cool reading this comic and then prepping for tonight's show. Uh, so yeah, I really can't wait to see how this arc actually uh, wraps up and ends. So we're streaming to YouTube now. You got anything quick to say about the finale? Whoa, well, yeah, Rat Queen's Adventure? Tonight is the finale of Rat Queen's. I'm a little pin on. Fun, I like the Game Master K. one Thanks. with the crown. I love that. The Game Master one and the Dungeon Master one Ooh. from the site. But yeah, we got the Rat Queens, uh, the finale of the Rat Queens RPG tonight on Hyper RPG on Twitch, live at 7 p.m. We have, we left off on a really big cliffhanger last week. We, we revived Betty's body, and then Betty was having a drinking contest with death to see if she could reclaim her soul. Ooh. We left on a cliffhanger. We're going to find out what happens tonight Ooh. on the finale and see if our Rat Queens can finally destroy and defeat uh, this chaos old god that's been tormenting the world and well, essentially stopping the end of the world again. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully the dice will be in their favor. Those rat queens are gonna need your support chat room. Yes, so hopefully. Make sure you tune in. It's going live at 7 p.m. Pacific time. Yeah. We'll let you, I'll let you come back into okay. your show. And I'll let you go prepare for your finale. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks for jumping in there. I was, I was shook too. I was like, huh? Yeah. I didn't know how else to describe it, but. That they go down trail and then they get dropped into a vat of acid. That's nuts. Yeah, what a Gary. What a Gary. What a Gary. What a Gary. Uh, did you get a chance to read Pretty yes, Violent? Yes, I did. It's like a Saturday morning cartoon. But with death. <laughs> yeah, but more like blood. But it's um, just the way it's drawn, the kind of pacing 
of it, just the way, yeah, it's laid out, the language. Um, oh, I, I already see. Okay, I want to make it really clear for everybody because I don't want the mods to confuse you. No, it is the series finale, okay? Uh, it is the series finale of Rat Queens Night. You should show up, show your support. Series finale. Uh, so show up, show your support, okay? Do it. I don't want anybody, I don't want, I don't want people to say other like, stuff and then yeah, it's the series finale. So show up, show your support. So yeah, this is super cute. It's fun, like a Saturday morning cartoon, but like with dad, you know, and lots of swears. So uh, yeah. I got to read the first issue. Uh -huh. I'm bummed I haven't got to catch up on it yet because the first issue was a great setup. Yeah. Does it dive any more into the um, like setup for her family? Does it go into any of the family stuff in this one? Uh, not to what I kind of. It was just like more fighting and superheroing and stuff. Okay, like that. her trying to be a hero but yeah. being bad at it. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> oh man. It's like, does it remind you of like Ren and Snippy? It kind does, of stuff? a little yeah. bit, a little bit. A little that, bit. That's like the vibe I get from it. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Wow. Dude, this is crazy. I, I love this book. I'm, I'm flipping through it because I should have read it and I didn't get a chance it, to should, read it. Should I carry the baby? They're almost home. Oh, okay. Lucas is just a couple minutes out. Sure. I texted him. I was like, hey man, Huck's freaking out. Yeah, he misses his papa. Misses his dad. He misses his papa. He was a rescue dog. Yeah. He's got some separation issues. Uh, so one of my favorite books mm -hmm. on the stand, this week was a little bit of a filler. Mm -hmm. It's not very often that this book has filler issues. Yeah. Uh, usually it's just like constantly sure. moving forward, moving forward, moving forward. Uh, but Middle West, speaking of I Hate Fairyland and Wesley Marshall, this is a Scotty Young book. And it is a extremely, extremely well done Scotty Young book that is about fathers and sons. Who's Scotty Young, if I don't know? And he was originally known as doing a lot of the covers uh, for Marvel tray or Marvel like um, variant covers of the baby versions of things. Oh. And then he did uh, I Hate Fairyland. I was a writer on, on that. So uh, Scott Young's writing this book, and it's it's so good. And uh, Jorge Corona is doing the art, which is also amazing. This is one of my favorite books. Every time an issue comes out, I'm plugging it. I'm plugging it so hard. I, I'm crazy about this book. I, I think that it's, but I have, you know, an interesting relationship with my father. You know what I mean? So it hits really close to home. Sure. And it deals a lot with anger mm. and this anger that gets passed down and how to break away from it. You know, how if you, if your father has anger issues, is that, be, are you now a person with anger issues? You have this storm building inside you. And the way that they portray it is so cool. It's literally a storm. His family all turns into these tornadoes and rip villages apart. So it's just so good and it's so smart, but it hits really close to home. This issue in particular does some resetting up of the story, mm -hmm. uh, reintroduce some characters that we haven't seen mm -hmm. in a while and kind of gets you ready for the next chapter, but it definitely feels less movement than a lot of the other yeah. issues. Uh, but we get set up on this farm. Our, our main character has been kidnapped and is now going to be forced to work on this farm. Beautiful, uh, uh, landscape. It reminds me a little bit of Chu as well. It has the feeling of Chu and being this kind of otherworldly, mm -hmm other version of our regular world in a really cool way. It's great, it's really great. I can't recommend enough. Most of the books that I take the time to read every week, I'm gonna be like, yes. If it's a book that you've seen me talk about more than once, then I'm probably gonna be highly, highly recommending it. Uh, it looks like Wesley Marshall picked up volume one via recommendation, still oh, reading it. What do cool. you think so far? Yeah. What do you think so far, Wesley Marshall? I wanna know what you think. Uh, I know I got Matt into it. Now Matt's hooked on it. Oh, interesting. Yeah, Matt's super into it. Matt loves comic books too. We've had him on a few episodes. All right, so uh, Marauders number one. You didn't get a chance to read this nope. one. This is the first of the new X-Men books not written by Jonathan Hickman. Mm -hmm. so, so what'd you think? Jerry Dugan uh, coming in to do this one. It was fun. Mm -hmm. And I think what I like about it 
all of the other books that are going on, uh, all the other books that are going on right now in the X-Men world are very serious. Mm -hmm. This one brings a lot of the fun back in. And the basic setup is Kitty Pride is the only one who can't get into Krakoa. Whereas oh, the mutants no. just travel through and are able to just travel to Krakoa as mutants. Mm -hmm. For some reason, Kitty Pride can't. So she steals a, 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 a sailboat and sails to Krakoa instead. Is this what you put for your clickbait title? Yeah. Uh, Ahoy, mutants! The other thing I like, this is the first book that we've gotten that's kind of showing us the, um, her phasing ability might have something to do with it somehow. Maybe, we'll see. This is the first book that's outside of Hickman's run. So it was cool to see that even though this isn't a Hickman book, a lot of the design choices are now going to be across the board for X-Men books. Oh, cool. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, that's so that all is of, really cool. So all of the setup here and the graphic design that's yep. happening within the books now looks like it's going to happen across all oh. of the Dawn of X-Men stuff, and I thought that was really cool. Awesome. And uh, I, I'm excited by that, because now I'm more excited for all the other new releases coming up to know that they really are trying really hard to just tie all these books together as closely as possible. This is the new, the new standard for X-Men, and I think that's great. Uh, this was really fun. They're, the idea is while she was on the sailboat, she tore a page out of her diary and put it in a bottle and threw it in the water, oh, yeah. and it was picked up by the government oh. uh, of the Afi Office of Naval Intelligence, yeah. and they're using it as a, like, maybe this is a way into Krakoa. There's obviously one of the mutants can't get in, yada, yada, yada. Uh, it's good. It's really fun. It brings fun back into the world, which we kind of needed. I love the color. Yeah, oh. color strong. And the, and the Logan shopping list. The Logan shopping list, yep. It's t what I like about it is it's taking all of the seriousness that Hickman put into the books and then making it really silly by having Logan's shopping list on here. It's freaking ridiculous. Um, yeah, it, it's a funny kind of troll in a way, I feel like. But basically, uh, Emma sends her on a mission. Mm. And if you, for those that have been, were reading House of X and Powers of Ten, uh, Emma's obviously up to some side stuff that some of the other X-Men are a little worried about. And we get to see now what those things are. So yeah. that was a setup uh, to lead into Marauders, which is great. So Emma reaches out to Kitty, who now was going by Katie, and uh, Katie Pride, and says, I've got a boat, <laughs> and I want you to lead, basically set the black market price. You don't know a lot about this X-Men stuff. The X-Men have used Krakoa to make themselves a sovereign nation, and also they've used Krakoa to create plant-based drugs that can cure cancer and many human ailments. And okay. they're selling these. I know you said many human ailments, but I heard you say many human ailments. And I was like, Ooh, what does that mean? Maybe that too, we don't know yet. <laughs> so um, they use that to create power within the United Nations and stuff like that to be basically like, they have to pay attention to us. What we have is too valuable. And Emma in this scene is basically being like, as the people that make this, we need to be leading the charge and setting the black market price for our own drugs. Yeah. So we need a covert group out there setting the black market price and doing it in a, hu a humane way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we get some fun stuff. We learn that <laughs> a couple of the portals that Krakoa has set up around yeah. the world are being guarded by humans. Oh and humans aren't letting mutants cross through or they're using that as an opportunity to capture them if they do, and that creates some fun stuff. So overall, I think it's a great outing for the first non-Hickman book in this new cool. future like a lot of, of the X-Men. It's a it lot is. of fun. It is a lot of fun. I don't think you can go wrong with it. I don't think you can go wrong with it at all. All right, let's go to the next book. What's up, what's up? All right, next book. Oh, yes. King Thor, number two, is the next book on our list today. Uh, pick it up. <laughs> Just do it. Jason Aaron, uh, Asad Revik, like, do it. It is the team that started the Thor run. Yeah. And it's the team that's gonna end it. Gore the God Butcher is back. You got Thor and Loki trying to, once again, overcome their brotherly woes. 
The art is unreal. The art is very beautiful. It's epic. It is everything a Thor book should be. It is metal. It is brilliant. The writing is tight. The art is phenomenal. <laughs> it is just. Animals. Yep. Yep. Those are Animals. Thor's Thor's granddaughters. Really? Yeah. Riding a shark. Like I said, Jason Aaron loves his, his animal companions. And I do too. So much good stuff. I mean, I'm going to be picking up every issue of King Thor. I feel like this is one of those runs that will be talked about for years. Like, this is the kind of comic book run, Malika, that, you know, years from now after we have kids and they go to college and all this stuff, I'm going to hand them a book and be like, you got, you got to read this. This is some good shit. Hopefully I'm still alive and I can be like, you gotta read yeah, this. Yeah, I don't know if we're gonna make well, it. Probably the not pace make we're it going. Yeah. yeah. But you gotta read this. This is this is good this is good mm -hmm. stuff. You gotta check it out. But oof, I, I don't wanna it's amazing. Oh, there's yeah. so much good stuff. Don't you love the pencil shading marks oh, though? I love the well like um I really like seeing softness in comic books because as much as I like the graphicness of what we know as comics, um I feel like Comics have an emotional range to show mm -hmm. us a lot of sensitivity, and I right. like seeing that sensitivity reflected in the line quality and like the shading. I, uh, I mean, we're both art students, so I think we we just yeah, appreciate. Yeah, I'm like a nerd about that. Yeah, man, we're blowing through these comics this week. This is why Adam and I just talk about BS for oh, so long. Oh, okay. I mean, also, we well, didn't wait, get. I have a rant for like Luna Snow, like a long. All right, all right. We're we're not there yet. Okay. I'm just like holding it in until we get to that book. Okay. Because okay. I have a lot to say. Neither of us got to read as many comics as we wanted. We had a bunch of meetings today and we had we have a lot of things going on at Hyper in the next couple of weeks and it's kind of driving us into the ground. I had like my first meal yesterday at midnight. Yeah. So it means I didn't eat yesterday at all. Yeah. It, it's been wild. It's been a wild couple of weeks and we have a wild couple of weeks in front of us. Um, so we're not getting to read as many comics as we want. For one, I didn't get to read Immortal Hulk number 25. No, I wanna see this, this celestial artwork though. Click that, open uh, that one up. You know what, we're gonna open it up just, yeah. just so we can experience the art. Do you art. guys read comics anymore live? If we have time, but we haven't had time in a yeah. long time because usually there's just so many books to sure. talk about. Uh, Immortal Hulk's been really good so far. Ali Wing is writing um, and it, uh, Oh, this is cool. It's, I would check this oh, one out. Oh, the art's so yeah. beautiful. This That's is so crazy. Neat. Yeah. Uh, I'm, all right, I'm gonna put that on my to-do list. So I'm, this one is cool. You like Hulk. I love. I mean, I know I, you. Why? Hulk. Why do you? Why do you know this about me? Because you had a rant about Hulk Vereen's being one of your favorite oh, books. I mean, okay. It's Hulk meets Wolverine, and love, you thought okay. it was a work of fucking art. Well, I really like the Hulk. One of my favorite characters. Um, okay, I just like, okay, so I love superheroes like you and Adam, but I also am like an artist and I love symbolism and stuff. And like, when you have this, like, I mean, that's why I like the beast too, you know, where it's like, can intelligence live in a brute? I know it's such a dumb setup, but I, that's what I love about it. And, uh, you know, it's just. I love a, I feel like the Hulk himself is a symbol because his internal conflict is, don't, don't spoil it, I wanna, I actually wanna read, I actually wanna read this Okay, so what I will say though book. is, this is a horror Hulk book. Okay. Uh, I like spoops. They turned the Hulk I mean, into a, in his a hands. horror book, yeah. which has been wild. Yeah, that's cool. A lot of body um, horror. But what I like about the Hulk is he is a, he is a symbol of um, of a lot of things, you know what I mean? Fuck. The fuck is going on? Holy shit, this issue is nuts. Uh, okay, that's... We should check that one out. That should have been on my list. I read a lot of yeah. books that I felt mad about this week. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't just because I knew what to skip. No, I read a lot of meh. I felt like I was being a hard ass, but I was not impressed with a lot of Ooh, stuff. Ooh, so you have a Luna Snow rant to go on. <laughs> yeah, I I read uh, Luna Snow, I read... Um, okay, well I didn't get a chance to read Ghost Spider number three. Okay. I will, I will catch up. Okay, so... 
I did pick this up because this is part of like as like uh, we ran into Greg Pack yeah. at New York City Comic Con. Yeah. And we had a great talk with he him. He was cool. He was really cool, and we had a great talk with him yeah. about what he's been doing. This is his. Signature. Yeah, we have we to still send, have this. To send this, this out. This is a gift we got for Shadow yeah. Uzumaki. It's a signed Agents of Atlas book by Greg Pack. Oh, uh, it was actually for Bark. Sorry, sorry, Barking Darrow. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I said the wrong name. I'm sorry. We have other gifts for Shadow. <laughs> we have other gifts for Shadow, which is my bad. To so Barking Darrow, it's in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get people's names mixed up. You know this. Um, so we had a great talk with him, and it's really interesting because. Um, the Agents of Atlas has been spinning off a bunch of other issues. Yeah. A bunch of other runs right. of single right. books. Right. So it's kind of like every character, which it kind of needed. Sure. Because the Agents of Atlas introduced so many new characters. Right. So many new characters yep. that we haven't seen yet. We needed a chance to see Hi. them and who they are. But to be totally honest. Uh huh. When I saw this one, yep. this character is one who existed first in yeah. the mobile game Future yes, Fight. Yes, yes, yes. So I wasn't really confident yeah. in the setup. Yeah. Uh, which is a comic book bias. Sure. I'll admit. Okay. Just like I don't pick up the Spider-Man books based on the video game, even though the yep. video game is really great. Why am I like that? Why sure. do I just immediately sell it off? Because it's a video game tie-in. Yep. But I do. Yep. That's my own bias as a comic book snob. Yep. But you picked this up, uh -huh. and you said you've got a whole rant about it. Okay, I have a lot to say about this book. Let's hear it. Okay. I'm gonna start it off with, I really wanted to love this book, okay? Look at this face, this is an Asian face, okay? We are not represented in comic books. Of course, I want to support creators who actually want to make superheroes for all the underrepresented Asian countries. Nobody's ever given a two cents about, you know, Asian people, especially from Southeast Asia in Marvel comic books. That should be commended. Of course, I want to support. That being said, what you said about the video game tie-in, I felt the same way, except for <laughs> I felt that like times three because you this make, is a mobile character. You make mobile video games. And I, okay, I, mo I make mobile <laughs> video games, okay? I, that's how I started in the games industry. I love video <coughs> games. I love K-pop. I want to support this book. But I had such a hard time with it because, first of all, okay, and like there's a female writer. Like I really, really wanted to love this book, but I had a, such a hard time because it felt cheap to me. It felt cheap. It felt like Marvel was like, hey, K-pop's popular. We got this mobile game. Uh, Asians like mobile games over there in China. And they like K-pop. And they like K-pop. <laughs> and girls are hot. And so it just like, it, it did nothing for me. And there are other like origin story books of the new um, uh, superheroes that are being introduced mm -hmm. through Agents of Atlas. But this one, I, I was really let down. First of all, it lacks a lot of things. Um, I will say though, I think it is pretty cool. They released a real K-pop song. You know what I mean? Really? So you can go to marvel.com slash, you know, whatever is advertised on the first page. I did listen to the song. It's a, it's a very catchy, uh, sugary sweet song, but I listened to better K-pop, I'm sorry. I really wanted to love this one. I really wanted but to love the same, this one. in the same vein, but like, they've done these gimmicks before, not just with the K-pop well, though. I, they've made songs, they've made little videos. They've made two for her now. Okay? And they're usually not good because it's a comic book company who has a very low budget to do things well, like okay. this. What do you expect it so, to be good? So like, for example, League of Legends is the same thing. They did a K-pop music video, ah. except for it was really good. Okay, here's it was really good. Honest question: Do you think Marvel Comics has even one one thousandth of the amount of money that League of Legends has? Uh, but, I don't. But there Let's are so real. many talented K-pop artists. I gotta figure it out. Let's be fucking real. Do you think Marvel, the publishing comic book company, has enough money to hit up a big time K-pop group to make a song like League of Legends does? I don't. I don't know. I, like I said, I wanted them to figure it out. I wanted this to work. It failed me in so many ways. Um, so here's the thing. Uh, like, I really love um, supporting like female creators mm -hmm. and feminist stories and stuff. 
So you have this girl who's part of a K-pop female group. Yeah, Preston Bryant says she better not be an idol in her alter ego life. Um, and what really disappointed me is there's a few pages where you get the interactions with her group. Mm -hmm. And they really lacked the um, charm and sisterhood of a lot of uh, books that I see, for example, like from Boom. You know what I mean? Where those are like, I feel like are really representing the female experience and mm -hmm. of sisterhood and of like f female teams. Uh, and like this one was written by a woman, but like, you know, she gets her superpowers and they're like, oh my God, but your hair, like it didn't actually feel real to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's just like, you know, it was almost like Final Fantasy X-2. It was like very gimmicky to Who me. do you think this book's made for? I don't think it's made for women. No, who do you think it's made for? I for think them? it's made for Do you not think it's made for young girls? Because I know that Marvel's probably not betting for people like me to pick no, up. No, I think it's like maybe people who are having a good time playing the game and this is like extra content for them. Because look at the video game concept art that they also put in this book. It is like way cooler than like the actual book in my opinion um so if you go to the website and you go listen to that's her, a good page i mean that's cool that's you a know? good page um but like uh if you go on the website and you go and listen to her song and there's a tie-in in the comic book that it's saying like silk can't stop singing this song or whatever it's it's fine it's not it's okay song um sh uh like she, um, uh, it's all footage from the video game. It has less to do about the comics and more about to do the, with the mobile game. Um, also, I've been kind of tuning into these like little snippets of these, uh, what do you call them? Future Avengers. Future Avengers. Uh, I think I'm like too old for this. Like, I feel like this is That's what I'm telling you. Do you another... think that this book is geared for young girls? Uh, young girls deserve maybe, better? Maybe, maybe you're too old. Maybe I'm just too old. Maybe, Maybe I'm just too old. too old. I don't know. You're, you're like, you're just this old, cranky, cranky woman. Yeah, I'm just a cranky old Asian lady. And you know, it's just... I want more. These damn kids. I expect better. I don't know, though. I, I love what, some what children's media. What an old, media. cranky Asian woman thing to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> better for these kids. Yeah, I don't know. I was just it's kind of let down. Yeah. Yeah, like, I like this stuff. This is great. I I mean... This is from the game. Yeah, but I don't consider this, like, sequential art. No, like. it's an advertisement for their mobile game. Oh, they're putting Crescent and Io in the... Yeah. Yeah. In Future Fight. Or, actually, I think Crescent and Io came from Future Fight, now I think about it. Well, quite a few of them did. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, that I do think, though, okay... It's a smart way to introduce introduce new characters into the Marvel Universe is through a popular mobile game. Mm -hmm. I think that's smart. Mm -hmm. uh, more people, whether we like it or not, sure. more people are going to play that damn game than read this comic. Yeah, for so that's sure. That's a great way to introduce new characters now yeah. through the mediums where people are I mean, actually consuming these things. Uh, yeah, putting a game that is even like sort of successful on mobile will hit millions and millions of people like mm -hmm. every day, you know. Uh, so, but it's just, I don't know. I just like wanted to care more about the character yeah. or be more impressed with like, you know, it really lacked, like there's so much good comics right now. I almost got spoiled with like really awesome female team dynamic. I didn't get that from... Uh, it was it was neither sincere nor charming nor honest nor real. You know what I mean? It just didn't have anything for me. Yeah. But maybe I'm old. I think you're just old. Yeah. Maybe I'm just old. Oh, Adam's back. <laughs> Adam. He's living in the doghouse tonight, bud. <laughs> hey, I'm older than her, so she she's got that to throw back every time. Uh, Dr. Mirage number three, I did not get a chance to read it, but this new run of Dr. Mirage it's has good. been really good. Oh, yeah. it's been great. I've never really gotten into the character either. It was also a character I wanted to get into, but I was like... Yeah. I love it. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. Uh, the dog. first issue of this new run was really, really good, so I will be reading this. I just didn't have enough time to put it on my list. I told uh, you... I see in the chat room, young girls deserve Jane Foster. I'm like, I don't true. know. I, if I had a daughter, I'd be like, read about this cancer survivor woman with her friend talking horse. You know, like, just like. 
Written by an old dude with a beard in Missouri. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> fine. Or like I said, I think a lot of the like the boom stuff. Yeah, but Jane has, Foster is really has good. a lot of like great like female. It does like, boom. Stuff. Does a great like, job of putting out really strong female voices. A lot of like magical girl kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I think it just. Yeah. Uh, did you read Deadbeat? So I know I told you to check it out because the cover and the tagline looked interesting. Uh -huh. I looked at three pages and went, nah, I'm gonna read something else. No! Okay, I have stuff to say about it. Did you, were you into it? Okay, so I, I didn't, I couldn't the, read all 163 pages. Okay, obviously. so here's my thing. I am way too tied to art on whether or not I'll finish a book. Uh -huh. And I opened it up while you were reading it. Yeah. So I opened it up on some of these pages. Uh -huh. And the art. Oh wait, you could. Can you see that I'm reading it? Yeah, because we're on the same account. So when I open it, it just jumps to where you're yeah. reading, and I see these pages, and I'm like, okay, I know this art's not going to do it for me. So the art was way off for me. I, I wasn't no, able to vibe with it. Uh, Whether, but it's an anthology series. Okay. Uh, uh, all right. Tell me about it. So I like this like clearly way more than this now. So let's start at the beginning. Um, I, I just love this. First of all, this has like been a really popular concept in a lot of indie art. Indie video games use this, and now it's uh, comic books, which is like releasing a collection of works like a music album. So I, I already love that kind of conceit. Okay. You know? Then, so you start off the book, and I thought that I was not turned off by the art. So basically, you're in a record store. And you have this okay. really cool uh, lady who works at the record shop, and she's like, hey, welcome to this uh, record store. Let me give you the tour. And I, I, I like the way this was drawn. I like the colors. It was moody. It was mysterious. No, I, if I would have started and here, then, I would have been uh, more likely to keep I, I love that she's your personal tour guide to these different stories, um, stories or tracks. And so, uh, you know, I skimmed through this one. Okay, if I had started in this area, yeah. I would have kept going. Yeah, so I got sucked in. I really love that. And in between stories, she was like, oh, how'd you feel about this one? Well, why don't you try this one? And so I um, I like this a lot. And I, liked, I like that it was enveloped with its own narrative of this uh, mysterious uh cool record shop okay. girl, you know okay. what I mean? And uh, I thought it was really awesome. And, okay, so the next one is pretty outrageous. Snake song. Okay, all right, so, uh, you, next page. So, uh, when I saw this panel of these archeologists doing it, and then they're like, you know, we're gonna <coughs> get back to work. Uh, I really got the sense of all these short stories kind of have, they capture the surrealness of music. You know what I mean? Like some music is like, oh yeah, if I were to draw it out, it would be kind of crazy because you're jumping from one thing to another to another to another. So like, I feel like the short stories that were added to this anthology were selected because they are almost like a song. Okay. So I, I really like that. You know, uh, my sister and I, for example, we're a big fan of Leaves Eyes, the symphonic metal band. And she's like, you know, all these songs are just about like lesbian vampires, like having sex, right? So like, I, I like that these- it's fucking metal. Yeah, these like <laughs> kind of, you know, it's it, it's like less like um, a cohesive, like comic book story and more like, a comic book dream inspired by a mishmash of like indie music. You know what I mean? And um, that page that you opened up on when you were like, ah, the art. So I I felt like that one, it was intentionally like looks like that. You know okay. what I mean? Okay. Kind of like, I don't want to say like Basquiat or something, but you know what I mean? Like that's, it's supposed to be that way. Okay. You know? So I should give it. I should give it a chance. I you think should you should give through. it a shot. Okay. And then what's really cool is there's so many. It's 163 pages. Just skip to the next song. Just like if you're listening to uh, an album of, you know, music. Okay. Uh, and but I like the kind of enveloping story too of this uh, kind of record shop tour guide lady. I like her. She's you know she's like look, pops look in how, every once in a while. Look the way she's like very mysterious and she you know it's like this. Little music and shop. And she plays a saxophone, yeah, so, you know, with a leather jacket. Like, what's not to hate? You know, she's got cool, you know, jewelry and stuff. And, uh, you know, the, the, the stories are different, but you can see how they're kind of 
they're surreal. They're you know move pretty quick. They they're paced in a kind of dreamy kind of way where it's like cool. That was a song. Some are gonna stick out to you more. Others are gonna uh, kind of fade into distance. Okay. Maybe you might skip some. You might go back. You know, we might repeat one. It's it was. I like this concept of exploring a bunch oh, that, of that looks cool. Yeah, short comics that. with. And there are so many. There are yeah. so many in this book. And uh, so, yeah, I thought it was it was great. Sweet. Yeah. Well. Like heavy metal meets Tales from the Crypt. Yeah, something like that. It looks like there's a lot more to it, though, like pop. Yeah, and yeah. There, and yeah, like, there's, there's uh, you a know. lot of different takes. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so I need to go back. I need to check that one out because mm -hmm. you're saying, you know, it's, it's pretty well, cool. Well, I think it's just like a lot to flip through. It's like a fun one to flip through, mm -hmm. you know, and then you can you'll read one or two that resonates with you. So sometimes I pick up books on this show where I'm going to be reading them throughout the week. Mm -hmm. uh, I like reading long comic books. Yeah, yeah. And I'll, you'll know I fall asleep almost love, every night um, reading books. Kind of more the graphic novel experience yeah. reading too. So I picked up uh, Baltimore Omnibus Number One. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to check this out because mm -hmm. uh, this is one I I didn't pick up when it was coming out. So I'm excited to dive in and and check it out. Cool. And read it from. Front to back, 567 pages. Yeah, wow. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Batman Curse of the White Knight number four. I didn't get a chance to nope. read this, but I will be. Uh, I will be, I will be, I will be. I just didn't get a chance to do so. I'll get there. Uh, did you, I, I read the Mary Jane. Number one? Yeah. Oh, good, we can yeah, talk about that. and then Agents of Atlas. I didn't too. get a chance to read Amazing Spider-Man Full Circle. I'll get there. Oh man, it's been a week. Agents of Atlas number three though. Did you get through it? Yes. So All right, tell I've, me about I, it. I've been following. I've been, I've been digging one and two so okay. far. Okay, so I've been following this story because I like it's like I uh, I want to like this one. And now that um, Yoshi Sudarso has uh, played, um, uh, you can you see him. Yeah, as Yoshi. I see him. You I see, see that's Yoshi yeah. to me. Oh, me too. Right? Yoshi he did such be, a good job. Yoshi is so much better in that role than Randall Park. Randall Park, I love Randall Park. I do too. Okay, but he I is love not, him. He is not but John he's Wood. not that or not, character. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, here's this what I, this is what I have to say. I wasn't crazy about Agents of Atlas issue one and two. I just oh like, really? I was enjoying it. Well, I just like I didn't know who the characters were. I didn't know why they mattered or why. Yeah. You know, I liked Silk, and that was like kind of the only character I knew about. Jimmy Woo. Um, Jimmy Woo. Yeah, Jimmy Woo. Uh, but now that I've gotten a chance to read like the White Fox story, which I like so much more than Luna Snow, uh, now that I'm like learning more about these characters, I'm excited for Swordmaster was fun too. I, lo I love so Swordmaster was training with Shang-Chi mm -hmm. and New York. So now that I like learn, I've learned a little bit more about these characters, I'm starting to get into the story more and I'm starting to really enjoy uh, seeing how they interact as a team. You know, their personal little, like how they joke with each other, how they might disagree, how, you know what I mean? Their dynamic. I'm really starting that, to enjoy that more, but I needed to read those other introductions to those characters for me to mm -hmm. give a crap. So if you're like, hey, I'm, you know, curious about Agents of Atlas, you know, I think they're doing a really cool thing. I would recommend reading those uh, origin story books for um, the new characters. So even though Agents of Atlas came out first, I think it's a better experience that way. So, I mean, that's what I pretty much have to say. It's a lot of fun, you know, they, they're great. I mean, like, they're family. And I love mm -hmm. that um, family is such a big theme for all the Agents of Atlas books so far. And uh, now I care about the family dynamic. I love this frame right here. Mm -hmm. This is a great mm -hmm. panel. Everyone's got their shoes off. Yeah, like the, it's the, just like the little Asian thing. The little Asian touches you know, are really nice. And yeah. they're all wearing the slippers, and they enjoy their noodles, and it's not in a, like, you know, like Asian people wrote this yeah. story kind of way, which I really appreciate. And, you know, they have their little quarrels, you know, at the dinner table, but they love each other. Mm -hmm. And they are all on the same page when it comes to what matters, which is being a good person and being, a, you know, a hero. So, um, yeah, it's fun. It has, you know, the agent, like a little bit of a spy story. I love that Shang-Chi is the one who's like training everyone. Yeah, he's always like, yeah, yeah. Well, know. he's the best martial artist yeah, yeah. in the world, so. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, 
I'm starting. I'm, I'm finally like this is the first issue where I was like, you know what? I think I would. Keep you get okay. But cool. the first two, I was like, I. I, know. I was into the first two, so. Not, you know, I'm I'm not so easily. You know, okay. You know how like a talking horse is like I'm in. For me, when I see stories that are like. And this hero flies in, and this hero flies in, and it's like the Avengers. I'm like, I don't, I don't care about that as much. But if you put a talking horse in the book, yeah, you got it. I mean, it was so cute. Did Amazing Mary Jane number one have any talking horses? Um. Okay. So what? So I, this is gonna be sad. I didn't get a chance to get through this whole book. Sure. I only got through the beginning, and then the mm -hmm. show started. Mm -hmm. What I liked about the beginning is it reminds me a lot of Straczynski's run when Mary Jane was in L.A. Yeah. and Peter and Mary Jane were momentarily split apart because yeah. she was following her yep. acting career. Yep, yep. What it was missing though is Straczynski found a great way to create really strong adult emotional ties. Mm -hmm to a couple having to be separated and going through these experiences apart yeah. from each other. I don't feel like that's happening. Here. Sure. So, uh, like a sidekick animal, um, Mary Jane is not like a fleshed out character to me. You know, I know you've read some books with her. I've read fleshed out yeah. Mary Jane and non fleshed out right, Mary right, right. Jane. So this was like my first time to like see her more than just like the girl next door that opens the door and is like, <laughs> Hello, Tiger. Yeah. You know? Um, and I thought it was a lot of fun, and I I really like the last panel of this book because she's, like, she finally gets to be, like, a fully capable, like, superhero and woman and really feels like an equal in a superhero kind of way uh, because of this book. So I, I thought it was a lot of fun. I don't think it, there were any kind of deep like adult relationship kind of stuff. They weren't doing marriage maintenance yeah. uh, in this book. But, uh, you know, seeing that last panel, well, seeing them kind of together and the last panel at the end, I was like, you know, I, I like this. This is this is good. Uh, someone's asking in the chat, are they separated again? No, in Amazing Spider-Man Nick Spencer's run, uh, there is uh, Mary Jane gets a job. They decide as a couple that she should take it. And Peter, of course, misses her flight leaving. He was going to take her to the airport, and he missed it because stuff came dumb. up. Because he's Peter. Because he's Peter Parker. And but you know, they're they're still on good terms. They're still dating. You know. Yeah. You know, they just like they're great. They're like great people. But they're like she's more fleshed out. You know. They're so cute. Look at that. I love that. You know. She's like more than his cheerleader. I mean, the best Mary Jane stuff is so then when they, she's they more than his cheerleader, for sure. They repeat that, but she's suited up at the end. So, yeah. Anyways. To be continued. Yeah, so she's on a movie set with Mysterio, right? Isn't that the setup? Mm -hmm. That Mysterio is the one running this production, which is such a... It's silly. It, it's been done. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the first time this has happened, so it does feel like it's kind of a callback. Uh, a couple things in that book felt like callbacks. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 32, yeah, I checked yeah. out this week. Um, Spider-Man 2099, Miguel shows up in this issue. He hasn't met Peter yet, but he's trying to get to Peter because the future is in peril. And um, that's, that's about it. <laughs> Not too much happens in this issue. We do see his sister again, uh, newsflash, Peter has a sister now. She's an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, just like his parents were. I've never liked this. I've never liked getting to know that Peter has parents that were S.H.I.E.L.D. agents, um, and now he's got a sister too. It just always felt like unnecessary. Very stretching. <sighs> it it, it kind of takes me back to the Star Wars argument, which People I hate. People were like, Peter has a what? Yeah, wait, what? <laughs> uh, it kind of takes me back to the Star Wars argument, and to me, what I loved about Rain Johnson's Star Wars is he made you feel like anyone could be a Jedi. Mm -hmm. And then they like. The little boy and everything is like, like anyone can be a Jedi. They look back on that. And Spider Man to me has always represented this idea that anyone can be under the mask. Mm -hmm. Anyone can Hector be special. talks about that too. Yeah. You're when you start making one. his parents shield agents and not just people who died in a plane crash 
and his, you know, and his, uh, his people who raise him are his very normal aunt and uncle, you start to pull away from that anyone can be special idea and can rise to the occasion whenever they're confronted with mm -hmm. this thing, which in his case was a radioactive spider. But I don't like the idea of him coming from a special family with special talents. It, okay. it makes him less interesting. Okay, this comes back full circle, though. We have this conversation at the beginning of the stream where, like, I think that interpretation, which a lot of people have, that's a beautiful message that you have this beloved superhero that's an everyman mm -hmm. and that anybody could be underneath that mask and we could all, you know, be inspired by this heroism. And then, um, you know, some writers, this is not the first time, has kind of like, you know, like you said, like taking that back. So, but you're just kind of like, but you are upset, aren't you? Yes and no. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep reading it. Yeah. I like certain aspects of Nick Spencer's mm -hmm. run. I think Nick Spencer does Spider-Man's villains so well. Mm -hmm. Spencer is great at writing villains. I love the way he writes villains. Less like how he writes Spider-Man and his relationships. I think it's fun that he put Spider-Man living in an apartment with one of his villains. That's fun. Uh, but you know, little things like that. And he wasn't the one that set up the whole, like his parents were shield agents. Um, but I dig, other aspects. I can be upset about one thing and not like it, but still like other things. So, there's still things I like. Sure. Are you trying to trap me right now? Are you trying no. to Are you trying to trap me? No, do you want to be trapped? Are you trying to like like get me in a gotcha? Is that what you're doing? I'm not one of those kinds of people. Mm. <laughs> oh, you're not a gotcha person? Really? Wow, that's a surprise. I don't get any enjoyment from that. <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> um, I think that is all the books yeah. from this week that we got a uh, chance to read. I'm going to put the Thor on my to-read list for sure. King Thor is amazing. Yeah, yeah. King Thor is... And, and, oh, and so the good. Hulk book, though. We should read that together. Okay. That, that one looks also amazing. Why are Hulk Vereens so important to you? I really like Wolverine. Okay, this is gonna sound weird. All right. So, um, like Wolverine has this like weird relationship with women in that he ha he's kind of like taking Jubilee like under his wing. Like I really like that relationship a lot, you know? And uh, I guess like as a person who grew up watching like 90s X-Men, like I identified with Jubilee. Okay. And so like, Beast and like Wolverine are like my uncles to me or something, you know? So, um, and then I also feel like Beast and Hulk, they have a lot of similarities, right? They're like scientists and now they're like big old monsters. Dude, Scott Porter brought something up last time he was over here that I never thought about. Like the original X-Men cartoon was all about couples. Yeah. It's like, yeah. it's all the couples, X-Men, except uh, uh, that you have a couple outliers. Sure. And it's like, you may think that it's not, but it's like Wolverine and Jubilee are like, thematically a couple. Yeah. They're not really a couple, no, but No, 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 they're not a romantic couple. Right, and Beast is like the outlier. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why I was like, oh, lonely. Yeah. Anyways, um, so I guess the reason why I like Hulk Greens is just like a combination of like, I like these characters, let's smash them together, you know? That's the extent. That's the extent. Th again, she has a lot of thoughts about this Luna Snow book and it being a proper representation of something that little girls might want to actually find a voice well, in. It's just, but I care if you a lot. put it, if you put a talking horse in your book, or you smash together Hulk and Wolverine, <laughs> a plus motherfucking book right there. That that is a plus content that she will just rip off those shelves. <laughs> hey man, I said it was lowbrow content. Uh, I'm realistic about what it is. It doesn't mean I don't enjoy it. Okay, so we had a question. Uh, Preston Bryant did say, what the hell are Hulk Marines? I also, uh, there so was we got a, that. Uh, there's um, also a question about... I mean, if you want to sit in really fast, I'll go do it. Uh, I guess. What's wrong with them? They're just... Uh, I, I can only like change the color of two and not all four. Okay. I'll go look at them. Here, you can hop in and say hi to everybody. Okay. Zach is trying to figure out why I love Hulk Marine so much, and yet I'm giving a hard time to some of the other comic books I read this week. I didn't read anything this week. I've been out shooting all day. Tell me how your day went. It was good. Um, 
What do they have uh, to look forward to this Friday? So well, Friday, you got some sun. I did, do I? Yeah. We, uh, Lucas and I ran around South Pasadena and Hollywood mm -hmm. because on Friday we're doing a live stream from South Pasadena. We're gonna take a tour of all the filming locations uh, for John Car with that uh, are in John Carpenter's Halloween movie. So some of the stuff we pre-recorded because we would have to drive to some of them mm -hmm. and I don't wanna bore people mm -hmm. on a car ride. Mm -hmm. So we have about 15 minutes of pre-recorded content that we're gonna roll at some point during the stream. You'll have to watch and find out. Uh, it was fun though. We went to a school, which mm -hmm. <laughs> security guard was like, hey, just so you know, you can go in the school and film. And I'm like, don't worry, we won't. We didn't plan on it. Um, and then we went to a couple of other fun locations. I won't say what they are. You guys will enjoy them on the stream. But most of our time spent during the live segment will be in Pasadena. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff. There's, I'm still working on a couple things, uh, emailing back and forth that I'm hoping we'll be able to go check out. The rest of it will be kind of like ping ponging between a bunch of different locations, which cool. I'm excited to check out. I, I usually go there all the time, or all the time. I've been there like twice this year alone. Sure. Um, it's like an annual tradition and there's some fun stuff over there that I think people will get a kick out of. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to just I don't think we've ever done a filming location live stream, well, like IRL live well, stream. Well, there was the Hector Marvel New York Oh, true. Tour. You guys just did that one, it's yeah. It's going to be like that, but I guess tighter because we have some mix of some pre-recorded stuff. Yeah, and yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that for anyone who hasn't seen Halloween uh, who will be watching, we're going to have some reference footage as well so you kind of get an idea of like where in the movie this takes sure. place. And you'll actually get to see how different some of the stuff oh, looks now. Oh, interesting. So you get to see how the... The movie magic is made. Yeah, right? That's like, cool. especially one location in particular, which makes sense. It's a when, school. It's been when updated. When was Hol um, Hol When was <laughs> Halloween um, made? Uh, it was shot in the summer of '78. So yeah, and that's released like, a few months later. Uh, '78. How many years? Is Forty. That? One 41 now. Forty-one years. Damn. Yeah. Damn. So yeah, yeah of course stuff is gonna change. Yeah, and some happen, some locations have literally been rooted. Uprooted and moved. Whoa! To preserve because of the movie, or just one was a happy accident. Mm, interesting. Which thank God, wow. because uh, yeah, so it'll be a lot of fun. We're gonna be doing that from five. Uh, we're gonna start at five p.m. Um, the first location that we're going to is really fun, and if you ever get a chance to come out to California and you get to go to Pasadena, we'll make sure to let you guys know where those locations mm -hmm. are. But I will say this, and I said it a bunch of times on the stuff that we recorded. Some of them are private residences, so don't trespass. Yeah. Well, okay, so I've heard that, um, yeah, for people who like live in houses that are famous movie houses, it's just like, there's always a small crowd taking yeah. photos. Sometimes they like will <clears throat> repaint their house to yes. make it like less recognizable it's or le put up big hedges. Yeah, and it's I would say it's less common in Pasadena because if you come to Los Angeles and you do sort of like the, the guided tour. Yeah, like the tour buses and Yeah, stuff. that primarily stays in Hollywood, West Hollywood mm -hmm. area. And there's really only two major Halloween locations uh, in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. um, but, and I've, I've heard for, through, through friends and other people and stuff that for those two particular locations, they're not as friendly. To sure. tourists, yeah. which I understand because Hollywood is such a hugely trafficked area. Oh my gosh! Yeah, and mm -hmm. and it's the home to a lot of communities too. Yes, yeah, yes. different like ethnic communities. Yeah, and, stuff. and it's it's kind of like um, it's one of the. There are not a lot of residential areas in Hollywood, mm -hmm. and this is like one of the few. So yeah. I think they're really kind of tight about like, sure. don't, like can just kind of leave us alone. Yeah, it's definitely the we we shot something there today, and it's definitely an area that we probably spent the least amount of time oh, in. Because yeah, yeah. there was just stuff kind of happening. Like, yeah, there was like construction happening mm -hmm. and, go, and like other things going on. So we're like, let's just get in, get our thing and There's leave. also no parking. Absolutely, and that's the one nice thing about Pasadena, um, in South Pasadena specifically, there is so much parking. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm really excited. I, I like to just go walk around these areas once a year or a couple times a year. Um, and it was great to be able to just like go do something different with and fun with Lucas. Like we did a whole thing in Europe where we traveled around in the IRL stream, but that was like, that was really traveling and walking yeah. around. This will have that element, but because I wanted to cover a bigger area and I More didn't like want to- More like a TV show. Yeah, yeah, I didn't want us to be in a car for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So we have some specific points we're gonna hit, then we'll cut to some stuff that we pre-recorded. 
And then a majority of the live stream stuff will be happening sort of within like a mm. mile radius. Mm -hmm. But it'll show you how efficient they were when they shot that movie. Oh, awesome. And resourceful. That's great. Hi, Kaiju. I haven't seen I you all day. He's mad at me. I know. Oh. Well, all right. So thank you for tuning in to Comics and Coffee. Huh? Hit the end button when you're done. Okay. Thank you so much for tuning in to Comics and Coffee. Don't go away. Our finale of Rock Queens is up next. Stay tuned. See ya. Bye-bye.